a numerical expression to represent the description. Do not evaluate the expression. The word product indicates multiplication, and the word quotient represents division. If we have one third of three fifths, that is one third multiplied by three fifths. You could also represent it as multiplication with the dot. But remember, we're trying to avoid using the x for multiplication because now we're working with variables. The quotient of 2 and the product of 25 and 12. So this is 2 divided by the product of 25 and 12. You could also write that as a fraction, 2 divided by the product of 25 and 12. Let's think about whether these expressions are the same. If we divide a number by 50, is that the same as 50 divided by that number? Well, what if x was 100? Then for this one, it would be 100 divided by 50, which is 2. And for this one, we would have 50 divided by 100, which can be reduced to 1 half. 2 and 1 half are not the same. A way we could use a phrase to describe this expression is a number divided by 50 or the quotient of a number and 50. And this one could say 50 divided by x, or the quotient of 50 and x. In the table, write an algebraic expression that represents the description, or write a description of the algebraic expression. All variables represent non-zero numbers. So what that means is just any letter that you see is not equal to zero. A number x multiplied by 4. The quotient of 14 and b. 5 times as much as p. One third as much as y. Another way we can write multiplication when we're talking about a variable is to put the number and the variable right next to each other, and then we don't even need the dot symbol. The product of x and w, a number v cubed. Remember, cubed is 3 because it's 3D. Here, the description, this could be the product of 3 and w. This one could be two-thirds as much as p. And then this one could be the quotient of t and 15. A number, a, split evenly into eight groups. You could also write it as a divided by eight. Triple the value of r. That would be r multiplied by 3. You could write it like this as well. 200 divided by x. Or you could write it as a fraction. The quotient of a number n squared and 9. So n squared and the quotient of that and 9. Again, you could write it as a fraction if you prefer that method. 1 half of the product of 6 and w. That phrase product is a grouping word, so I've used parentheses to group that. 8 divided by the product of r and 3. 
we can just write that as 3r because they're being multiplied together. Here I have 2 divided by the product of 5 and x. This next one we could say is 1 7th of the product of p and 3. The expression represents the product of two thirds and y. Choose all that apply. Well, two thirds and y, the product would be a multiplication. So a shows two thirds times y. B shows a two on the top and a three on the bottom. And if we were to multiply this out, we could think of it as y over one. So that could be rewritten as two y and a three on the bottom, so that would be B, but we wouldn't have a Y on the bottom. It would only show up on the top because of that invisible one. Which expression shows the quotient of two thirds and Y? So this one for sure. Then we could also think of it as if we were writing it as a fraction, with division we can leave, change, change. Remember we're not using that for multiplication anymore, we're using the dot. So 2 times 1 would be 2, and 3 times y would be 3y, so that would be c. The y doesn't show up on the top and the y doesn't come first. If it did, it would say the quotient of y and 2 thirds. So we want a and c for this one. Let's a through d. Evaluate the expression when x equals 2 and y equals 6. So this is 1 third. We're replacing the x with 2 and the y with the number 6. Again, there's invisible ones here. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 1 is 3, times 1 is 3, and 3 fits into 12 4 times. We're replacing the x with 2 and the y with 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so this is 3 twelfths, which can be reduced. 3 fits into 3 once and 3 fits into 12 four times. The x gets swapped out with a 2. The y gets swapped out with a 6. There's an invisible one here. 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 6 is 6. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. Three times six is 18. Two fits into two once, and two fits into 18 nine times. Let's phrase a number represents an unknown, so we swap it out with a variable. And if a variable isn't provided, we can choose any letter to represent that number. So it could say one third of the sum of a number n5. My name is Mrs. Stocks, so maybe I'm going to use an s here instead of an n to represent the number. You get to choose which variable. Typically, we avoid s because it looks like a 5. You get to choose your variable if it's not provided to you. 
5, complete the table one box at a time. All variables represent non-zero numbers. When the box shows a description, write an algebraic expression to represent the description and choose a variable for the unknown number. When the box shows an algebraic expression, write the description of the expression. As you and your partner both finish each box, compare your answers and make corrections as needed. Remember that correct answers can be written in more than one way. I'm going to write down some answers, but if you choose a different description, it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It might just be another way to interpret the same thing. Here I have the sum of 3 and twice a number. I'm going to use x for my number here, just because that's the variable. 3 and twice a number. So 3 and twice a number, and it says the sum, so that's the addition piece. Here I have one half of the difference. That difference is a grouping word. So the difference of a number and 12. And we need half of that. The sum of two thirds. So sum is an addition. Times a number and seven. So two thirds times a number. The sum with seven. Six subtracted from. So that goes at the end. The quotient, that's a grouping word of four and a number. You might also see this one written as four divided by x as a fraction, minus six. Now for these, we write a description. The difference of four and the product of 2.5 and a number. So the product of 2.5 and a number would be this 2.5g, and the difference would be that subtraction piece. Here I could write 3 fourths of the product of 9 and a number you might also say the 3 fourths of 9 times a number this would be the quotient of 5 and the sum of 2 and a number. Remember, the sum is that grouping word that puts the P with 2. This could be 3 fourths of a number. decreased by 8. I'm going to clear out the responses and show the answers that they provided. So you can see a different way of writing B as well, since there is more than one correct answer. Eighteen more than the product of five and a number. Twenty minus four groups of a number, so that would be four to nine less than 
the sum of 10 and a number. Remember that sum is a grouping word, and that phrase less than tells us to stick it at the end. 14 fewer than, that also tells us to put the 14 at the end. 6 times a number, that would be 6 times a variable. And I'm using x as my variable. This could be three sets of the difference between nine and a number. This could be the quotient. of 8 and z reduced by 10. Here we have 3 times a number increased by 9. This could be the sum of t and 12 split into 8 equal parts. There's plenty of different ways that we could rephrase these that would also be correct answers. So again, I'm going to pop up the ones that they've provided, and you can see if they have a different way of responding to these. Please make sure your workbook is filled in. You can select one of those responses. You don't have to use theirs. You can use mine or theirs, or you can come up with one of your own. So make sure you have an answer to all of those questions and that your composition book is filled in with the warm-up as well. And then check back for lesson nine.